Welcome to the Brainstorm episode 52, one year in. Today we're talking about Neuralink, but Nick, it's been a year. First episode was actually, I think it was June 14th. So we've only missed four weeks over the course of the year. Good work. And the past two of the four, the past two weeks. I know. And that was kind of just because uh, it's a little, a little summer lull. We apologize to those who were hoping for new episodes. And if you were tired of listening to us, well, you got a break. But a we're nice back little, now. A, ni- a nice little respite. But now we're back. Yeah. And we're talking about Neuralink. I feel like this was a super exciting update that they gave last week and then largely not covered by anyone. So I think worth diving into. Nick, I want you to go ahead and play the web grid game while I give a recap and then share your score. And so the web grid game. I will tune you out and begin. The web grid game is essentially taking your mouse and clicking different boxes that light up on a grid and it's simple and surprisingly addictive and they use it to measure the capability of the current implant. And so just a quick high level background on Neuralink so far, they had their first human implant in Noland Arbaugh. You can follow him on Twitter at ModQuad. He does tons of videos uh, and you can see how he's using the device. One of the pretty remarkable things is he's using it like 70 hours a week. Um, That's kind of the peak, but it probably averages around 50. So he's putting in a lot of time to using this. And really the update here was talking about one of the big things they saw from the first implant, which was that uh, some of the threads retracted from the brain. And so right now there's only about 15% of electrodes active. And pretty remarkably with the software updates and training, uh, Nolan's capability still is improving doing to, you know, because of those software updates. Uh, And so in the web grid game, which Nick, I think you probably are close to finishing right now. Mm -hmm. What'd you get? I got 8.5. So Nolan with his brain implant got 9.5. So it's already already outperforming humans in in the field. Um, we'll give Wait, you, is a higher score better? Y- yeah, yeah. What is this? The is that what you asked at the SATs? <laughs> um, so, right, it's it's pretty incredible, right? When I did it, I think I got like nine point nine, so not that much better than what Nolan got. And again, this is with. Only 15% of electrodes still in. Uh, Really remarkable. And so then the question is, what are they going to do to prevent thread retraction going forward? And there's three main things they highlighted. The first is neurosurgeons typically lower CO2 levels uh, in humans when operating, which shrinks the brain slightly and gives you a nice little air pocket to have room to work. They're not going to do that because they think that contributed to some of the retraction. Uh, They're also going to add additional slack on the threads. And so that's uh, having the implant closer to the brain and having a flush inner contour of the skull. So that's important. And then the third one is probably the most obvious. You place the threads deeper in the brain. Um, That's a high level summary. Some underappreciated things. The robot that's doing this, right, these threads and electrodes are super small. So it's a robot that's inserting them in extremely precise fashion is remarkable. And I don't think people appreciate that that's like a big innovation. And it's not just, you know, slapping a a patch into the skull. Um, The other is, right, they're going to do these things so that there's no thread retraction and that V2 is going to be uh, hopefully much higher bandwidth. So 9.5 bits per second from Noland through that web grid as the measurement. V1 had 64 threads and 16 electrodes. 
V2 is going to have 128 threads with eight electrodes per thread. Uh, and they're saying you need fewer electrodes once they get better at placing the thread in the correct spot. And they're hoping to really improve bandwidth by an order of magnitude. So going from what it is today to megabit per second, and then maybe down the line, even gigabit per second, right? And it's not even about reaching human parity, which they already have, but giving humans superpowers. Uh, I think the other interesting element here is what that means for communicating with AI, right? Just being able to interact with the computer at a much faster rate than you could tapping a button, whether that's on the keyboard or on the mouse. Uh, Nick, what are your thoughts? It's very sci-fi. I mean, it's pretty remarkable what they're able to do. I have a few questions. One, what other companies are going after this innovation and are there differences in approach? And then two, and this is more just out of curiosity, is there long battery life or is this tethered? How exactly does this chip function and get recharged if it is wireless, which I assume it is maybe. Yeah. So on that, I think they mentioned it right now. I think they said it's like a four ish hour battery life and they write the Nolan uh, can't use his limbs. And so I think they designed the wireless charger in a hat or in a beanie so that it's like he can give a command and say like, you know, charge on or something like charge me up and it'll start charging his implant. I think they're trying to double battery life with the next version. There are um, a number of companies that are pursuing, you know, brain computer interface. Um, some are going similar paths. Some are building off of more traditional mechanisms. I mean, I think the difference is speed when it comes to Elon Musk and his companies. Um, and you're right. I think you just go back two years. They did the first demo with, I forget which animal. And everyone says, you know, tons of scientists are working on this, yada, yada, yada. This is dumb. You know, classic tech person coming in thinking they can change everything. And I think we're starting to see the execution and the robot implant being a key piece here to be able to do, you know, hundreds of threads, thousands of electrodes in precise locations is going to be a key to scaling. Is the number of threads directly proportional to performance? And what are the limitations? I saw in your write up, right? The next goal is to restore eyesight, which just seems, I mean, unfathomable, but obviously possible if they're talking about it, but how many, like, what are the limitations of, or what are the current hurdles to getting there? Is it just hardware or is there some software component of this as well? I think certainly software component and I'll, I'll give, you know, one of my favorite quotes from the presentation was saying, you know, if you want to know what's going on in a factory, you need to go inside the factory. You can't just put a stethoscope on the wall. And getting to the point that a lot of the brain's actions are highly, highly localized. And so finding the exact point to put an electrode is important. Uh, and so, you know, right now before they implant, they do an fMRI and, you know, you go in the machine and they say, think about moving your right hand and that fires off neurons. And then they say, okay, you know, this is where we're going to put it. Uh, and I think as they continue to go forward, getting better recognition of where exactly to place these is going to be important. Uh, and then to what you're saying is I think, right. Threads, thread is like the each one and then the electrodes coming off of the threads uh, is important. And then they also distinguished on number of channels being used. But at the very 
basic layer, I think you can think of more threads is higher bandwidth in theory. Um, for the eyesight, they did note, right? First implementation is going to be, it's not like you're going to see what a capable human is seeing. It'll be maybe pixelated or blurry. And then potentially over time you get to superhuman capability and you could, you know, see sonar, <laughs> right? It's like, is, yeah, I have a, I'm just, I went through his Twitter and maybe I'm missing demos here. Is he able to write down his thoughts? I'm only seeing point and click as of right now, or is, is he able you know, to go into a word doc and begin to think of words and it shows up in the doc? Yeah, right now, I believe it's just point and click. They mentioned in the mm -hmm. update working on text as well. Okay. Yeah, that is, I mean, it's pretty fascinating. And they're putting or hoping to put this into another patient by the end of the year. Is that the goal? Yes, I think have a maybe, second patient. yeah, to certainly a second patient, uh, potentially a few. And then, you know, one of the things that they mentioned is potentially thousands over the next couple of years. Um, mm -hmm. And that could be pretty amazing as well, just as far as research goes. Uh, and then, of course, you know, they get the question always, could you use this co to communicate with Optimus robot? And in theory, yes, you could use this to communicate with a robot. But it's like from so the information. Avatar. What? That's like full avatar. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I just think people can't appreciate what it means to communicate at higher bandwidth because we don't do it right. Right now, our rate of exchange is words out. You listen to it, you process it, and then you speak back to me, which is pretty slow in the grand scheme of things. Whereas, you know, I could send you the whole conversation at Download once. <laughs> information directly into my brain. I mean, it's telepathy, I guess is the word. We isn't, is that what the product's called? Did I just, yeah. or did I make that up? Yeah. yeah, yeah. T telepathy is the, the first product. <laughs> and then I think it's, is it yeah. blind sight is the second. I think blind sight is, is the second one. Yeah. 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 And then how is this paid for? Is my is this a covered by insurance? Would it be covered by insurance, or is this out of? I mean, I've been, maybe it's too early to even begin discussing this, but I assume there is a path to monetization, right? Yeah, I have no insight into that, so I'm not. Even, I'm not even going to speculate. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm sure if you can give someone telepathy and blind sight, there's a way to make money for that. Of course. Yeah. No, I was just curious if they had talked about it at all. If it, you know, they're looking for insurer insurance carriers to cover this or what? Yeah. I think still too early for that. I think right now it's still just in the technical development, see what they can do. Very interesting. Very interesting. Do you think it gets to a point where it's not for, it's, you know, something that someone who doesn't potentially have any physical issues would try. Yeah. I think that's the key question. Cause this is after I saw the update and I did the web grid thing and I was thinking about it, I was like, this seems like a, you know, obviously one trajectory is more invasive, more threads and better performance. But I was like, the opposite is potentially interesting too, which is, less invasive, just let me control my computer with hands-free capability. And I was like, that's pretty compelling. Although I do think anything that has to do with the brain is pretty high risk. So who knows? But that was my, that was my initial thought. I was like, wow, this guy's already as good as I am at clicking on a screen. And this is with 15% of electrodes left V1. You have to imagine V five just blows regular non cyborgs out of the water. Yeah. And in, 
theory, if you can create eyesight for someone, you could then project visuals for those with eyesight, right? As in it, you know, Ooh, input becomes output mean? or output. As in you're talking about there still being physical hardware. In mm-hmm. theory, if you have some sort of relationship with a computer directly into your brain, wouldn't you then be able to just have images appear in your eyesight? As yeah. in you're not actually seeing it, but the computer is telling you that you are seeing it. So yeah. it's, you know, there is there is a floating screen. It's VR, AR without any hardware or the hardware is back here. It's all up here. <laughs> that would but yes, be... that, that'd be like the, the right to the read, right equation. And they, they mentioned right. that briefly and that is in theory possible. Yeah. Incredible. Honestly, this, this excites me a lot. I, I studied cognitive science and is, I, a lot has changed, I'd say, in the in the years since studying. Yeah, no, this is this is straight out of a sci-fi book. I know, and people, I don't know if people just write it off as too futuristic, or though people have done this before. We've had you know scientists trying this, but to me, it's it's really remarkable. Anything else? Final word, Sam, on this? No. I mean, if we, you know, hopefully we can get some scientists and others in the comments. Any questions you guys have? Anything you think we should be looking at with respect to this? Um, but I'm very optimistic for the future. Yeah. And shout out to Nolan. His Twitter is. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. So everyone should definitely check that out if you're interested in seeing the demos. It's very cool that this is available to the public. You'd think that this would all be behind the scenes, but the fact that it's so out in the open and you can see him playing Civilization, the game, and drawing memes on an airplane, pretty cool. All right. Well, that does it. One year of episodes in the books, Nick. Done. Done. I will say our first episode, I think, was on Apple WWDC. Uh, and that was probably uh, your, your take on the Vision Pro. So you can. We've come full circle, as in Vision Pro is a lost piece of hardware to be replaced by no hardware <laughs> or much smaller hardware, Neuralink. I've actually always thought that if we're being very honest with each other, that it's possible that AR and VR is a misguided technology and that a parallel technology such as Neuralink would just supplant and replace AR and VR because of how difficult it is to wear those devices all day. Mm -hmm. but then again you have to get brain surgery for Neuralink so much more (laughs) so there's trade offs which might be a little bit more expensive than uh, $4,000 yes but cost declines rights law I'm sure Sam you're working on this we'll get there awesome All right, we'll see everyone next week